Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing clean spark stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. CleanSpark is a Bitcoin mining and energy company. It started mining Bitcoin after the acquisition of ATL data centers in December of last year. It has added additional equipment and infrastructure capacity in order to expand its Bitcoin mining operations. It also mines Bitcoin through its recently formed subsidiary, CleanBlock. It currently mines 6 Bitcoin per day, and at $50,000 per coin, that's equivalent to $300,000 per day. They are adding more machines, which should add another 1.4 Bitcoin per day. It expects hash rate capacity of 1 exahash per second, which would produce approximately 9.3 Bitcoin per day. By September of 2022, it expects its hash rate to grow to 3.2 exahash per second. It has mined over 500 Bitcoin since entering this space. There should be a lot of synergy with CleanSpark's energy division and Bitcoin division. The number one cost of mining Bitcoin is energy, so its energy division can help mine Bitcoin more efficiently than its competition. If that is not a competitive advantage, I do not know what is. It may even sell its energy services to other Bitcoin miners. Prior to mining Bitcoin, its only business was selling energy services. The amount of energy Bitcoin mining uses is enormous. So if this company can help mitigate that process, then the sky is the limit for its stock price. The company recently updated MVault, which is its smart residential microgrid solution. Homeowners can buy a small grid and add to it over time. It enables the user to use power from multiple sources. It also stores energy that can be used during a blackout or any utility disruption. The company is headquartered in Woods Cross, Utah, and was founded in 1987. But back in 87, it was a totally different company. Actually, last year was a totally different company. Its main focus now is mining Bitcoin, which it just started doing last year. It started trading in 2016 on the pink sheets, but it was recently upgraded to the NASDAQ in January of 2020. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 508 million market cap. They're trading at 14.26 a share, and they have 36 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They do have negative free cash flow each year since they're not bringing in much revenue at this point. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also negative each year. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that was under half a million in 2017 and it grew 50 times to 24 million in the trailing 12 months. And their revenue is growing even more aggressively now that they're mining Bitcoin. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. In all of 2020, they had $10 million of sales. In just the second quarter of 2021, they beat that at close to 12 million of sales. You can see most of their revenue is coming from Bitcoin mining, 8.6 million, compared to 2.9 million from its energy division. And that was 3.1 million in the same time frame last year. The price of Bitcoin is highly correlated to how well this company does. If Bitcoin goes up in price, like it's starting to go back up again recently, then the company's stock will do well. But when Bitcoin crashed from 60,000 down to 30,000, companies in this space really struggled. This company has a hedge against Bitcoin because they sell energy services. So if they're successful at reducing the cost of mining Bitcoin with their energy services, they can sell that out to other Bitcoin miners. And that alone could be a really lucrative business. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And they do have positive gross profit each year. But their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit. So they have negative operating income every year. So the company loses money every year. They lost $47 million in 2018 and they lost $24 million in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So since they're losing money each year, they need funds from somewhere to run their business. They were using debt and equity to fund their operations in 2018, 19, and 20. But they invested a lot of money into Bitcoin mining machines and acquiring Bitcoin mining companies. So they raised a lot of capital, $240 million in the trailing 12 months, much more than they raised in prior years. 
So the company is all in on Bitcoin. The CEO said, we're going to continue diluting shareholders to grow our Bitcoin business. Raising stock and diluting shareholders is fine if you're profitable, but raising capital and diluting shareholders is bad if the return on your investment is less than the amount you diluted the shareholders. So if the company raised capital and diluted my shares and my shares went down 10% and they used those funds to buy Bitcoin mining machines and they only had a 5% return on investment, that's bad. But if they had a 20% return on investment, then it's good. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 282 million of equity. They raised $415 million from issuing stock and they lost 133 million from running their business. Retain earnings is a sum of all your prior net incomes. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 282 million of equity, 1 million of debt. So they're 99% equity, 1% debt. And their weighted average cost of capital is 9.8%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven, that's $2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $769 million. We divide that by 36 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $22. They're trading at $14. So they're trading at a 34% discount. It's a buy according to the model. The CEO of the company says its hash rate is one, which should generate $136 million of revenue from its Bitcoin mining. That's their current rate. So that's $136 million over the next 12 months. So I put $136 million in 2022 revenue because sometimes things don't go as planned or there's delays. So I tried to make it a conservative estimate. He said by the end of this year, they would have a hash rate of two. And by next year, it would have a hash rate of 3.2. So a hash rate of two means they should have 272 million of revenue. I put 272 million in 2023. A hash rate of 3.2, that's 3.2 times 136 million. So that's 435 million. I put 435 million in 2024, even though he says they should have that by 2022. So this is a really conservative estimate. And I'm assuming zero revenue in their energy division. If they grow their Bitcoin mining 50% each year until 2027, and then it's a 2.5% growth rate into perpetuity, I'm still coming out with a stock price of $22 a share. Even in the most conservative estimate, I'm still coming out with a stock price at 22. So this stock should be trading at about $30, $40 a share if the CEO's numbers are accurate because I didn't even add their energy business into my model. Two analysts priced this stock and their price target was $43. The company was trading on the pink sheets and then it was upgraded to the NASDAQ. They did a 1 for 10 reverse stock split in December 2019. And according to this chart, it looks like they were trading at about $10 a share in December 2019. So that means the stock was trading at $1. So once they did the 1 for 10 reverse stock split, it brought it up to $10. Because if a stock price falls below $1, it gets delisted. So when a company wants to move up from the pink sheets to the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, they usually do a reverse stock split to bring up the stock price. So it looks like the stock was trading at about $60 at its peak. But remember, you have to divide it by 10, that number. So it's trading closer to $6. Here's where the stock has been trading the last 12 months. When there's more buy orders than sell orders, then the stock price goes up. You can see all the green buy orders. They were really high and the stock got pushed up way higher. And then look at all the green over here. So the stock price got way up there, over $40 a share. That was its peak. And there was a ton of sell orders at this time frame. So since its peak, the stock has come down really low. It's almost at its lowest point. It looks like it dropped to about $10, but it's been coming up since that point. But it's still trading at a major discount than it was trading the past few months. This is a really volatile stock. It has a beta of 3.55, so the stock moves three and a half times the market. It's gone up more than the S&P 500, up 62% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P is up 36%. The low got down to $7, but the high was 43 and the stock is trading between its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 1.5 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 36 million shares outstanding, 34 million are on float. 29% are held by institutions, and it has a pretty high short percentage. Over 12% of the shares are shorted. And the stock price has come down a lot. The short percentage must have been really high when the stock was trading over $40. As the stock price comes down, the short percentage comes down. Because the lower the stock price, the less money you can make when shorting the stock. Analysts are really bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings to grow 51%, their revenue to grow 40%.
if you were crazy enough to put ten thousand dollars into this company in 2016 when it started trading you'd have forty thousand dollars today you would have been at a hundred thousand dollars at one point but nobody put ten thousand dollars into this stock when it started trading on the pink sheets except maybe some officers at the company and maybe their family members blackrock is the biggest shareholder at six and a quarter percent then amplify investments vanguard toroso investments and discover growth fund let's look at their financial ratios we can't look at the pe because they have negative net income their price of sales isn't that good but their revenue is growing a lot so this number should improve they have a good price to book because they raised a lot of capital recently it's at 1.8 they have been acquiring bitcoin miners so they have 48 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet they have a really high current ratio and quick ratio they have almost 34 million of cash on their balance sheet the company will need to raise more capital and they did mention they plan to dilute shareholders to buy more machines because they had negative 219 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months and they only have 40 million of working capital so they're short 179 million dollars the best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry i've done videos of 34 other companies in the same industry as clean spark and their ratios aren't as bad as i thought they would be they do have a better price of sales than the average and a better price to book. They're higher in current ratio. They do have a negative ROE, but it's actually better than the average company, which is negative 11%, because there's a lot of startups and a lot of growth companies in this industry. And they're really low in debt. And of course, they're a really small company, a lot smaller than the average. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 34% discount, but this company can 10X or 20X if it's able to combine its energy division with Bitcoin mining. Because if it does that successfully, and it seems like it already has, it could license out its technology to mine Bitcoin more efficiently and cheaper. And I heard a stat that Bitcoin mining uses more energy than the entire country of Pakistan. So it's just crazy the amount of energy Bitcoin mining uses, which is bad for the environment and also really costly. But if this company can have a solution for that, I just can't imagine how high the stock price can go. I ranked their free cash flow as 1 out of 10, their revenue 3 out of 10, and their ratio is 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.